good morning children sairam again i am here welcoming you with another chapter of flamingo today we are going to start with the second poem of flamingo that is an elementary school classroom in a slum so let's see about the author first so this poem is written by stephen spender and he describes the social inequalities which are prevailing in the society in the poem he describes the condition of the students of an elementary school which is situated in a slum area the poet wants to draw attention of everyone towards these kids so that their life can be improved and they may get trained to become good citizens rather than criminals so he thinks that it is each and every person's duty to have some concern towards such kind of students those who are not that much fortunate and we should definitely do something for them so the rhyming scheme for this poem is nothing it is basically a free verse you cannot see the rhyming scheme in the poem this time so let's see the hard words first okay let's see the about the poet so stephen spender 1909 to 1995 was an english poet and an essayist he left university college oxford without taking a degree and went to berlin in 1930 spender took a keen interest in politics and declared himself to be a socialist and pacifist books by spender includes poem of dedication the edge of being the creative element the struggle of the modern and an autobiography world within world in an elementary school classroom in a slum he has concentrated on themes of social injustice and class inequalities so here are the hard words with the sentence number 1 is gusty a cool and gusty free breeze it should be breeze spelling uh, smelling of wet dust hinted at the downpour to come second is pallor because of her natural pallor she doesn't dare go out into the sun without a hat and a plenty of sunscreen the third one is stunt his stunt tonight was nothing short of jealousy these are the hard words now first i'm going to read out the poem like complete poem i'm going to read out and then i will divide the poem into four stanzas far far from gusty waves these children's faces like rootless weeds the hair torn round their pallor the tall girl with her weight down head the paper seeming boy with rat size the stunt unlucky hair of twisted bones reciting a father's gnarled disease his lesson from his desk at back of the dim class one unnoted sweet and young his eyes live in a dream of squirrels game in tree room other than this on sour cream walls donations shakespeare's head cloudlets at dawn civilized dome riding all cities belt flowery tarolis valley open handed map awarding the world its world and yet for these children these windows not this map their world where all their future painted with a fog a narrow street sealed in with a lit sky far far from rivers capes and stars of words surely shakespeare is wicked the map a bad example with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal for lives that slyly turn in their cramped holes from fog to endless night on their slag heap these children we are skin peeped through by bones and spectacles of steel with mended glass like bottle bits on stones all of their time and space are foggy slum so blot their maps with slums as big as doom 
unless governor inspector visitor this map becomes their window and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs break or break open till they break the town and show the children to green fields and make their world run azure on gold sands and let their tongues run naked into books and white and green leaves open history theirs whose language is the sun so this is the complete poem now let's divide this poem and then i'm going to explain you let's take the first two slides children before proceeding further to the poem i would like to just give you the meaning of some of the words which i think is important like weed it's a wild plant that keeps on growing gnarled that is rough and twisted dim illuminated objects which are weak or light squirrel scheme fun and freedom it denotes fun and freedom here sour cream it means something that is artificially made or sour cream you can also uh, assume it is a kind of off white cream which is dull in color dome a round vault forming the roof wicket something which is evil slyly in a cunning or a manipulative manner mended repaired something doom it means destruction catacombs underground gallery and azure means bright blue in color like the sky you can say so for the first two stanzas far from from gusty waves waves these children's faces like rootless weeds and hair torn round their pallor the tall girl with her weight down head the paper seeming boy with rat's eyes the stunt unlucky hair successor so the poet describes the children who study in an elementary school which is set up in a slum area he says that the faces of children are dull and without any energy these children are compared to unwanted weed like the weed grows unwantedly everywhere so according to the poet these children have such kind of uh, thing in their mind always that they are unwanted because they are not getting the facilities so these children are compared to unwanted weed which grow on its own on it grow on its own in the fields their hair is not neatly done the children are untidy the poet describes a tall girl who seems to burden by poverty her head is bent maybe because of tiredness or shame these children they feel ashamed also of being poor because we people we f- make them f- uh, realize that thing we always continuously i think because of all of us only these sections of society they are literally losing out their confidence level because we are every time you know uh, we are always exhibiting inequalities there is another boy who is so weak and thin that he has been compared to the sheet of paper the boy's eyes reflect greed and he wants to achieve everything then the poet describes an other student who is physically disabled The poet says that this boy is unlucky because he inherited a disease from his father's father due to which he has a deformed body. Let's see this. Of twisted bones reciting a father's narrow disease his lesson from his desk at the back of the dim class one unnoted sweet and young his eyes live live in a dream of squirrel's game in tree room. other than this so the poet describes that there is another student who is a boy and he is very unlucky because he inherited some of the disease of his father and that is why he is having a deformed body this boy is sitting on the last bench and reciting his lesson another boy is there who is sitting in the darkness the poet could see his eyes which were bright and full of dream he was not paying attention in the class rather he was more interested in playing 
with squirrels in the tree house outside the class now let's see the next one on sa cream balls donations shakespeare's head cloudless at dawn civilized dome riding all cities bell flowery tarlis valley open handed map awarding the world its world and yet for these so here the poet describes that the walls of the school they are not clean they are untidy it means that the walls are not clean they have not been painted recently the walls are covered with different chart and images that must have been donated by different people there is a picture of shakespeare on the wall his head which is bald looks like the rising sun at the horizon there is a picture of the famous tarlis valley which has beautiful flowers there is the image of a map which helps all in its own way but for these children the map of the world is irrelevant because the slum where they live is different from what is shown in the map their world is only what they see out of the window of the classroom and that is slum their future is full of darkness the future is compared to narrow street which means that there is no wide scope available for their future growth these children are far away from the radiant light of knowledge and education let's move on to the next one surely shakespeare is wicked the map a bad example with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal for lives that they slyly turn in their cramped holes from fog to endless night on their slag heap these children so the poet further says that these children living in the slum area have faced so many hardships that they feel every other person to be their enemy for them shakespeare is an evil man they don't find the map to be a good thing they were never liked or loved by anyone therefore they hate almost everybody their life is going towards an endless night it means that their future is full of darkness these kids are so thin that one can easily see their bones through the thin layer of their skin these kids suffer from malnutrition they wear spectacles which are made of steel which is cheap and uncomfortable even the lenses in the spectacles are repaired the spectacles look like stones which have been repaired with pieces of glass sticking out of them the poet also says that as these slums are getting bigger they will destroy the future of the children and it is very difficult for such kids to escape from them because they don't have any choice they have to be in that condition and they cannot do anything for that so the last one is unless governor inspector visitor this map becomes their window and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs break or break open till they break the town so the poet says that the government should definitely take notice of the problems being faced by these kids he urges them to change the lives of these kids and make the world map a reality for them there is a need to break the restrictions which are put on them due to poverty and lack of resources and show the children to green fields and make their world run azure on gold sands and let their tongues run naked into books the white and green leaves open history there whose language is this sun the poet wants the public and the governor to help these kids in achieving their dreams the poet wants these kids to experience the sands and the beauty of nature as this will led to desire of gaining knowledge they will then go through the white and green leaves here white leaves depict the books and the green leaves depict the nature this will result 
in their progress and they will be able to paint a bright future for themselves so what is the message of the story the message of the poem sorry the message of the poem is that we must give enough education to the children those who are living in slum and we should have some courtesy towards them so that we can help them out and we can just try to bring out them from such condition if physically it is not possible then mentally at least they should come from there now your home assignment for today is these two questions number 1 what do you think is the color of sour cream why do you think the poet has used this expression to describe the classroom walls second is the walls of the classroom are decorated with the pictures of shakespeare buildings with domes world maps and beautiful valleys how do these contrast with the world of these children so that's all for today thank you sairam